So the fastest way I found to implement a heap is by using the container heap package straight from the Go standard library. I should first note that I won't be going over what the heap data structure is especially, just how to implement it within Go. To use it, you can just import it by using container slash heap. Go's heap package automatically organizes a min heap for us and reshuffles it every time you push and pop from it and also includes a few methods that are required on top of the provided heap that you make. But for the purposes of this video, I copy and pasted the example listed in the package link, which is right in the description as well. In this example, they provided methods that are required as per the heap interface type that is also in the documentation. And you'll see that we provide the heap package some standard operations to make sure that our heap is unique. So right now we have a heap pointer that is pointing to a list of type int heap and that will essentially carry a array of ints and we'll use that array and heapify it essentially is what in other programming languages call uh, such as python then to do anything with the heap we essentially provide the heap pointer as the interface to the heap package so for example in heap.init and heap.push you'll see that h is the common argument now h's elements are also directly accessible so right now we can actually access the individual array elements but they might not be in the same order that you originally initialized them in because the heap will heapify it and reorder the elements as according to the heap data structure and I'll show a few examples of what you can do with the heap as well. So let's say you want to dynamically insert elements of an array, maybe for a programming question on lead code or something like that. Then let's just define an array here of type int. And let's just call it, let's just, let's actually have the same elements in there. Okay, so we'll iterate over all the elements. We'll essentially push it to the heap. So heap dot push and the heap itself and the element we want to push or the value of the element. So that'll push it all onto the heap. And then you can actually print the values and check them out. So let's go onto our run command and you'll see that we have the same values and of course this is a min heap so this is the first layer this is the second layer and this is the third layer so it looks like that worked it was able to push them in and reorganize them as required but let's say you wanted a max heap the way we do that is essentially we just put a negative sign in front of the value that you want to add so when we do that you'll see that the highest value is negative five because that is actually the lowest value since negatives are negatives so when we want to grab the highest or the max element we can use the same operation to grab our root of our tree or our heap and essentially just use the math.absolute function on it. So to do that, we'll just use, we'll just import the math package. Now, of course, the absolute function also requires a float64 argument. So we'll surround the inner brackets with the float64. You'll see the minimum has now been printed out as kind of a maximum, as the greatest value. So let's say we want to create an empty heap by default. You'll see that we now have a max heap. So I've just done the same thing in our actual print function. You can see that it's printed out the values right here as a max heap. But one thing you may note is that I had to convert it to an int beforehand because heap.pop actually returns an interface or the interface as an integer. Now the interface itself is of the any type and you can't convert any to int because there's no actual type assertion there. So what Go provides us is the interface allowing us to convert to the specific type by using that dot notation. This is how usual interfaces are converted within Go. First we typecast it to an int and then we typecast it to a flow 64 and then we remove the negative by using the math.absolute function. So lots of nested functions there, but just see that it actually prints out the value just fine. 